And then today, the Ember Saturday in Advent. We're going to be here again in Seattle in a few considerations from the Father and the Son of the Ghost to Men. These are the last few days before the Christmas. And according to the tradition that the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph had to make a journey from uh, Ben Nazareth to Bethlehem, a journey that should take approximately three or four days, maybe three days. But they left on the 16th of December and it took them nine days. Nine days to arrive at um, the Bethlehem. And I remember that the, the devil knew very well the prophecies. Just like on Good Friday, the devil knew very well that this child was supposed to rise on the third day. He knew that extremely well. And that uh, the, 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 the apostles had forgotten it, but the Caiaphas did not forget, Annas did not forget, the devil did not forget. And therefore, a hundred soldiers were placed in the tomb in order to block Christ from coming out of the tomb. And so that there was a blocking of Christ to come out of the tomb on the, on, on the Good Friday at the end of his life so that he wouldn't rise on Easter Sunday and soldiers were placed there. So likewise, at the beginning of his life, the devil knew very well that this child was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. Remember, it was Herod that was asked by the, the three kings, where is this child supposed to be born? Because he could no longer, uh, they could no longer see the star once they arrived in Israel. And they looked it up in the Old Testament because they didn't remember as they should. And said, this child shall be born in Bethlehem. So the devil knew very well the child was born in Bethlehem. And the child was about to be born. And therefore he did every single thing that he could do to prevent St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin from arriving at Bethlehem. Every possible blockage that could be made, he made. And hence a three-day journey turned into a nine-day journey. And, and that everything was done to frustrate that journey. Well, we had to sell whatever money, whatever possessions, the money they had to, to stay was, had to be spent and all the difficulties and obstacles they ran into one after another. The devil put every possible obstacle to prevent Christ from being born in Bethlehem. And what was the spirit of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary during this journey? Because in fact, it was not only the journey of the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph. It was a journey of the human race. And it was a journey of 4,004 years. From the time that Adam and Eve were thrown out of the Garden of Paradise. And the time for the Redeemer to come to reopen those gates. And this is the final journey of the Jews. They're going, the Jewish mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Jewish foster and virginal father, the Saint Joseph. They are traveling in the name of all the Israelites. Forty years they would cross the desert. So many difficulties they would run into. It took them forty years to cross the desert. And there, this sacred final journey, this first novena of the New Testament, that the Blessed Virgin Mary and Joseph are on their way. And what is happening during this way? Every conceivable and inconceivable obstacle, every difficulty, every blockage is made to stop them from getting to Bethlehem. And what is their response? They know the gospel, or rather, they know the teaching of the Old Testament, they know the prophecies. They know that God has willed that his son be born in Bethlehem and they have heard a decree coming from, from Caesar Augustus himself that everyone had to be counted and they had to return to the city. Hence massive traffic, massive blockage, massive difficulties. And they went on that journey. They never doubted their arrival. They never doubted that God's will would be accomplished. They never doubted that he would arrive in Bethlehem and be born in the exact place of his own choosing. But he didn't watch the clock. They knew the baby was about to be born. So there are nine days before the birth, so they're fine. But they should be there within three days and have ample time to settle in to where the child will be born. But instead, we find ourselves on the ninth day. And the child is about to be born and they still have no place one frustration after another. But when we consider the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph, they had no frustration. They had no doubts. They didn't experience what the holy women experienced. The holy women, they ran to the temple, to the, to, the, to the graveyard. But why did they run to the graveyard? To see the body of Christ dead. And why did they go to the graveyard? To complete the burial. And what did they carry to the graveyard? Myrrhs and aloes. So they were mistaken in so many ways. But were they mistaken on their journey? 
When they arrived at that gar- at the Garden of Gethsemane, and they arrived there, uh, rather at the, at, the, at, the, at the place of the burial of Christ, when they arrived at the tomb, the angel was waiting for them and said, Look at the place where they laid him. To make it very clear that their journey was a good journey, that God was pleased with their journey, even though their minds were not right, even though they were mistaken, even though they had forgotten their faith, even though they should have known that he was risen and he was not there, it was a holy and wonderful thing to make that journey to the place where they thought Christ was dead. But the perfect journey was made by St. Joseph of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When they knew this child is God, and when they were walking on the way, experiencing so many demonic obstacles... They were not frustrated. And why not? Because St. Joseph saw and felt that the presence of God in the tabernacle of the Most High. He was there in the presence of God made flesh. Right there inside of the tabernacle of the Most High, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this tabernacle was walking with him. And the devil did not like it. And the devil noticed very, very much how this woman, this Eve, this new Eve, this Mary that she's so much more beautiful and so much more powerful and so much more filled with grace and so much more perfect than the first Eve was, who was made most wonderful, most beautiful, most filled with infused virtues, most perfect. And then the devil thought there'll never be another one like Eve. And he discovered this word, this little girl, Mary, she's so much more than Eve ever was. When Eve was created perfect, she was nothing compared to this woman. And the devil was scared, and he tried to stop her from arriving at at Bethlehem. And Joseph, he was greater than Adam. Joseph was much better than Adam, stronger than Adam, wiser than Adam, braver than Adam, more holy and supernatural than Adam. And Adam had infused virtue and was created most perfect. And he was amazed. How can Joseph come out like he is? How can Mary be like she is? How is it that all the devils are making so much noise around them and so many assaults are being made and they remain calm and they rebuke the devils and they are not at all disturbed because their focus is on Christ and their focus is on the goal. They are going to arrive at Bethlehem and the child is going to be born. And he's going to be born in Bethlehem according to the prophecy and the devil will not be able to stop it and they need not worry. They need not be disturbed. And they teach us about the journey of our Holy Mother, the Church. The Church is traveling down 2,000 years. And it is traveling until the end of the world. We are traveling men. We are wayfarers. That is why we we tell the people always, what is on the tabernacle? What is on the altar? It's a tabernacle. It is not a permanent thing. It is only a tabernacle. What's a tabernacle? It's a tent. What is the essence of a tent? What are the characteristics that make a tabernacle a tabernacle, a tent? A tent is something that you build tonight so you can take it down tomorrow. It is not something built in order to stay up. A tabernacle is something you build tonight in order to take down tomorrow. And it's something you're going to carry with you. And at night when you stop, you're going to build the tabernacle. In the morning, you're going to take it down. And you're going to walk to the next place. And you're going to build the tabernacle. And you're going to take it down. And hence the church, no matter how much stone in its cathedrals, we always note that on that altar is not stone. The altar may be made of stone, but on that altar is a tabernacle. On that altar is a temporary dwelling place, a symbol for a brief time for Christ to dwell as he travels, as he passes through this world, to remind us that we are only traveling. Oftentimes we want to stop along the way. We want to make heaven on earth. No, this is not our heaven. Our heaven is in heaven. And we have to walk along this path, walk along this world in order to get to heaven. And there's going to be many difficulties, many blockages. But what is the devil chewing when he blocks? The devil knows very well this man is going to rise on the third day and he wants to stop it. He knows very well this child is going to be born in Bethlehem and he wants to stop it. And he puts every blockage that he can in the way. But he cannot impede. He cannot stop the will of God. And we must recognize this remains true in our days. 
remains true in this 21st century. It will remain true until the very end of time. The devil cannot stop the movements of God. He cannot stop the movements of the saints. He cannot stop the movement of faith. He cannot stop the movement of the just. He cannot stop those that are doing the work of God. He can place any obstacle that he wants. But he cannot stop so long as we remain faithful. So long as we persevere in faith. So long as we remember they are walking with Christ. And so long as we keep Christ inside the mind, Christ inside the heart, the unblemished faith, then we walk with that faith and we build tabernacles. It's tiring to build a tabernacle because you build it and the next day it's taken down. And you build it again and the next day it's taken down. And you build it again and the next day it's taken down. But then you discover you're in a new place and a new place and a new place. And that place is closer and closer and closer to the destination we know that each day we're closer and closer to the final judgment. Each day we're closer and closer to the victory of the church triumphant. Each day we're closer and closer to the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Therefore, make another step. Make another move. Continue on the journey. And be not surprised that there are many, many noises that come from the devil. Many, many attacks that come from all sides. Be not surprised at that. But stand firm. We have to stand firm. Remember that sacred journey of nine days. It shouldn't have been nine days. They arrived at the end. There's no place. But they never got frustrated. They never got disturbed because they realized God is the one in charge. And when they were finally in that cave, and not even in the house, they were finally in that cave where that child wished to be born. Look at this most magnificent cave. They could also be disturbed that here we are. The one, the mother of God, and the foster father and protector of God made man. And we couldn't find something better than a barn of animals. We couldn't find something better than a cave. We knew for thousands of years the child was born in Bethlehem. We knew for the last nine months the child was born in Bethlehem. Why didn't we come here earlier? We should have done things differently. We should have done things differently. We shouldn't have done things the way we did. There's going to be an embarrassment for all time that we didn't prepare. No, they didn't think any foolish thoughts like that. They recognized that they followed the will of God. They followed the commands of providence. And they saw the beauty of that cave and the beauty of the straw and the beauty of the animals. They saw the beauty of that place, that this is the place where God for all eternity wished to be born. This is the beachhead that he wished to establish himself on the earth. And from this place, he will go out from that cave. He'll go out from that crib of Nazareth, of Bethlehem, and he will go and conquer the entire world. And he is going to be that he will begin his rule as the king of kings from this place. Three kings will come to adore him right away in the beginning. But it is going to be many. There are not going to be great disturbances in Saint Joseph as a virgin when they run into trials and tribulations. But remember that when we follow Christ, there must be tribulations, there must be trials, there must be challenges. But there are only challenges on the way. There are only challenges in the journey. The only challenge is while we're traveling, and when the traveling ends, the challenges stop. The challenges are temporary. The struggles are temporary. That is why it says in sacred scripture, many are the sorrows of the just, but the sorrows of the fool are infinite. Because the just experience in sorrows while he's on the way to heaven, while he's on this transient earth, while he's walking, while he's a homo viator, the traveling man. But when he gets to the end, it is over and finished. Whereas the damned and the unjust, they experience trials and tribulations throughout this journey, followed by eternal trials and infinite tribulations forever in hell. Hence the sorrows of the just man are many. But the sorrows of the fool are infinite. And the sorrows of the just man are mainly on the outside, from the attacks of the enemy, but he has many joys within. Whereas the sorrows of the fool are infinite in intensity, even in this life. He is the time progresses, the, the man who is a sinner, he gets more and more discouraged, more and more despairing, more and more empty, more and more filled with the wretchedness of sin, more entrenched in sin, and his sorrows become infinite even in this life. Whereas the sorrows of the just are limited even in this life, and they are gone completely in the next. Hence, we must understand we're on a journey and expect a few trials, a few tribulations on the journey, but be not overly disturbed. Continue on the path of truth and the path of faith 
and be not disturbed at a few trials and tribulations and imitate that sacred journey of the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph in his last few days before Christmas on that sacred journey to see Christ be born in, this ta- in the little crib in the cave out of Bethlehem. Who's God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.